Before the report, you were a buy. Can't imagine that has changed at all. But your price target was 865. What is it now? 910. So we raised the price target. You know, obviously numbers went up. And uh, there were a lot of notable things, Frank, coming out of the quarter that uh, I think investors potentially were a little bit concerned about and uh, relieved to hear, right? There's been this question and debate around the sustainability of what we've been seeing with NVIDIA numbers really up and to the right over the last three quarters. And uh, last night we got another $2 billion beat and more importantly, sort of a raise um, against consensus for the first quarter for the April quarter. And NVIDIA commentary that demand far outstrips supply for new products. So, uh, really interesting, you know, as you think about the sustainability of what, we, what we've been seeing here. All right. So, Ruben, I mean, the street's ecstatic about this report. You're coming in with a price target raise and also concerns. So, what was number one among the concerns you had? One of the things that we talked about with one of our reporters, Arjun Kapal, was the China business. Is that a concern for you? And, and, and again, what's your top concern? China absolutely was a concern, right? Because there's been uh, obviously these increasing uh, export restrictions on on uh, technology, and Nvidia talked about it last quarter, uh, i.e., that uh, China was going to come down significantly as a percentage of the company's revenue. China had been running somewhere in the 20 to 25 percent range as a contributor to data center revenues for Nvidia. Uh, that's come down to the mid single digit range. So even with that significant drop off in China revenue. We saw this significant beat uh, on 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 the top line for both uh, the January quarter as well as the outlook for the April quarter. So, what does that mean? That means there's demand coming from elsewhere. I think what the company did really well in allaying some of that uh, concern was to say, look, there's a lot of diversification of data center revenue coming now, not just across you know the cloud service providers and the investments that we're seeing from capex, but across industries, enterprises, and even sovereign governments. So okay. really a broad base to be here. All right, so now we're getting to the good side, Ruben, because you kind of led with some of the negatives. Um, I want to talk about NVIDIA going forward. Obviously, this was a blowout quarter. Uh, CEO Jensen Wong said this was an AI inflection point and signaled this was another strong quarter that we're in right now. How sustainable are these huge beats, these huge runs for NVIDIA? We had an analyst on CNBC yesterday that estimated that NVIDIA has about a five-year moat. How would you, where would you put that at? Uh, well, gosh, I'm not going to uh, put a, put an actual number on it, but I would say that the mode is it's, a, it's an extensive mode. And so AI, in our view, it comes it's a three pronged approach right now. You've got hardware, which is the GPUs and the system that the GPUs come on. It's networking, which NVIDIA is fine tuning for their own GPUs. So making very efficient networks for the clusters of GPUs, but also software. And software is something that's really difficult to uh, keep up with. You know, if you win the developers with your software, you're going to win the hardware. And NVIDIA has been doing a great job with that. So, yeah, I think it's an extensive moat for multiple years. And into that moat, you've got this you know, trillion dollar opportunity that Jensen Wong likes to talk about. Okay. And, you know, we've only had $47 million last year only, right, <laughs> uh, for data center revenue. So there's, there's a lot of upside in our view. All right. So a lot of upside. One question I want to uh, posit to you. We've been kind of noodling here um, amongst our team. Microsoft, Meta, those are some of the big buyers of these chips. How much more runway of, uh, is there of them being the, the major buyers? And if they slow down, who are the next wave of buyers? Yeah, so that's a great question, Frank, because you've got this debate as well on, you know, right now, most of the CapEx from those cloud service providers are going into these large language model training clusters. So that's a big, heavy lift spend. And the debate's been, well, what happens when, you know, that CapEx starts to slow? It can't be sustainable, right? And then we get into this so-called inference area of AI. I think NVIDIA did a great job on the call last night saying that last year, that $47 million or so of data center revenue, 40% of that was driven by inference. So it's already happening for NVIDIA, right? They're getting into these other areas of the spend. So that's enterprises, industrial, industries, and uh, the sovereign governments, like I've said. So I think there's a lot of diversification behind the cloud service provider spend as we look ahead into future years.